Hi, uh, my name is Julia. Uh, this is really nerve-wracking. This is my first talk ever, so this is scary. Okay, so my talk is Go for front-end developers, um, and really it should be Go for JavaScript developers. Front-end is just kind of a name we give ourselves to uh, dodge all the flack about JavaScript. Um, so yeah, my name is Julia Palatsky. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Julia Elise. I'm a front-end developer. Um, so what that means is I specialize in building web applications for uh, the browser. Um, and so I just started learning Go this year. Uh, I haven't worked on a Go in production app. Um, and also, that's not my dog. I just found that at the bar. It is cute. Um, <laughs> all right, so basically the point of my talk is simple. It's Go is a better design language than JavaScript. And so a lot of you are probably like, well, yeah, duh. Um, <laughs> but I didn't want to talk about it from the perspective of like other Go developers. I wanted to talk about it as a JavaScript developer. Um, as somebody who really loves the language, I love JavaScript. Uh, I wouldn't change my job for the world. Um, so yeah, uh, when I first started writing this talk, uh, I was just going to be like, this is how you do it in JavaScript, and here's how you can do it in Go. Uh, but I figured, yeah, so. <laughs> um, anyway, so I love JavaScript. Uh, you can do a lot with it. You can write server-side code with Node. Um, you can make these beautiful, rich front-end applications. Um, and it's great. It's super friendly to beginners. It's very easy to get started writing JavaScript. Um, and honestly, if it wasn't for JavaScript, I probably wouldn't be a real programmer. I mean, I know I did PHP, but let's just forget that. <laughs> uh, so what's wrong with JavaScript? Well, for starters, we have these two books here. Uh, on the left, we have the Definitive Guide to JavaScript, which is ginormous. And then JavaScript, The Good Parts by Douglas Crawford, which is very tiny. <laughs> um, and so I think this is like a perfect illustration of JavaScript's issues. Um, and I'm a big fan of Douglas Crawford. He's a very smart guy. Uh, so yeah, I, I mean, there's a lot you, that goes wrong in JavaScript. And I think like, ex like the new versions, ES6 and ES7, are just going to continue to exacerbate them as they add new language features. Um, so I stole this from a Douglas Crawford talk called The Better Parts, which if you're a JavaScript developer, I definitely recommend watching it, and actually just a developer in general. Uh, so it says, if a language feature is sometimes useful and sometimes dangerous, and there is a better option, then always use the better option. But I think you kind of just have to question at that point the language that you're using if this is something you have to think about. Uh, every feature in a language should be useful and be good and safe. Uh, so things that I love about JavaScript, I love how they handle functions. I like object literals because I like that you can just like make stuff on the fly. And I like dynamic typing, but probably not the double equals operator. Um, things that I don't like that make me a little bit sad is that you have easily declared globals. Uh, everything is in the same global space. So when you write front-end applications, you just dump all your JavaScript files and it runs all together. Um, this, what is this? It's not very clear when you're writing your applications what the context of this is. and it, literally took me a solid year to figure out how this is working in JavaScript. And then also silly things like semicolons, which, um, I don't know, it's sort of left to the discretion of the person writing the app at the time when they want to use it and when they don't. Um, so yeah, so I'm just sort of skimming on the surface of like things that are good and bad about JavaScript. Uh, but my main point is that uh, uh, <laughs> it's basically uh, that JavaScript is good, but I think Go is sort of the next step in the evolution of programming languages. Um, and I think all the good things that JavaScript has in it that I love, Go also has and builds upon. Um, and I think the lack of all this riffraff that JavaScript has is very good for the community. Um, 
it's very polarizing in JavaScript right now, and so as a new beginner, it's hard to come into it. It's hard to learn the language because you will get 10 different opinions about how to do it in JavaScript. And in Go, it's pretty straightforward right now. Um, so like JavaScript, functions are first-class citizens, which is great and fun. Uh, there's lexical scoping, but it also includes blocks. Uh, so you can do things like closures, and it's easy to implement and create methods on different types. Uh, it's different. Uh, so you have, obviously because it's statically typed, you uh, have typed parameters and typed returns. Um, it's pretty straightforward. <laughs> uh, you can also have multiple returns. And so, um, see, you can see here I have a string and an int as my parameters, and I'm returning a string and possibly an error. Um, and then another thing that's different and I think worth noting is that instead of JavaScript's infinite arguments, arguments, I don't know, this keyword, um, we have splats in Go, uh, which we're actually implementing in JavaScript in ES6, possibly. But just let me know when I can start using that in production. Um, so more likes. So if you're a JavaScript dev, uh, I'm going so much faster than I planned. <laughs> um, so <laughs> if uh, you're a JavaScript dev, something that you'll like, if you're very comfortable with asynchronous functions, then concurrency should be no problem for you. I hear lots of people being like, I don't understand concurrency, I don't get it, but if you've had to do uh, Ajax requests and deal with web sockets, then concurrency is pretty straightforward in my opinion. Um, more things to like, Go is garbage collected. So unlike other statically typed language, this is like one of the reasons I kind of chose Go also is just because it's, very, it's so much more approachable, you don't have to worry about memory management. Um, I mean, you do have to consider it, but it's not in a very literal way. <laughs> uh, I also like the error handling in Go, which is going to be weird for everyone else because everyone complains about Go error handling. Um, but I think if you're a good front-end developer, you're always looking for exceptions and trying to handle errors, which... Uh, I don't know why you wouldn't do that in any other language, but you know, you have to deal with things like your API request doesn't come back right, or the user inputted a bunch of random numbers when you were looking for just words. Um, so you're always sort of looking for the error in JavaScript, I think. And I also like GoFunct because yay, proper formatting, yay, not having to have arguments about semicolons or where you put your curly braces. Um, and then some differences, like obviously static typing is very hard, but I think uh, one of the reasons that static typing is great is because it forces you to sort of know the language before you start working on it. You have to learn what the types are and uh, in what cases you would use them. Uh, some, the compiler errors and compiling was like very hard for me at first. I'm used to JavaScript where I save the file and I hit refresh on my browser or I have it automatically set up in the background and uh, I get to see if there's an error or not on the page. Um, so compiler errors were kind of hard because it felt like uh, I was just constantly running into one after the other as I was getting used to the language. But it ultimately helped me, um, helped me learn the language. It was a nice way to like, figure out what I was doing wrong and then what I was doing right. Um, and then another thing that I've found difficult is packages, which I guess maybe shouldn't be such a hard concept, but um, I think for me, coming from JavaScript, you just import libraries, you add them to your index.html file. And so like knowing personally, if I'm writing a Go application, um, you know, when do I segment my app into different packages or do I do that? That's sort of something that I'm still learning and figuring out. Um, so I think something that both of the languages wanted to do was improve on inheritance. So JavaScript has prototypical inheritance, which um, not many JavaScript developers actually know how it works. <laughs> and it's something that I've uh, spent a lot of time trying to learn and so that I could understand Go's composition. 
Um, and I think some of the issues with JavaScript's prototypical inheritance have to do with the, you know, things that you give up with dynamic typing. Um, and so Go has composition, which you uh, implement with interfaces. Um, so this is my like lovely attempt to try and show how uh, composition can solve very complex relationships that classical inheritance cannot. So we have two very different types of things. We have guppies and horses. But one thing that guppies and horses have in common is they both give live birth. And so, you know, guppies and tunas are very similar. They both swim and they swim in schools. Um, but to try and represent this strange one-off relationship of giving live birth in classical inheritance would be nearly impossible. Um, or at least impossible to maintain because you'd have to always know there's this one weird case where maybe one of your fish gives live birth, like the guppy. Um, so yeah, this is, you can continue to write your code, you know, when you need to deal with live birth that you just implement birthers instead of land dwellers maybe. So, um, so yeah, so composition in Go is safe, comfortable, and explicit. Uh, and I'm pretty sure you could say this about the language as a whole. Go is safe, comfortable, and explicit. Um, and so I want to emphasize on explicit and not expressive because if you look up the definition, explicit is clear, plain, straightforward, easily understandable, and expressive, the definition is effectively conveying feeling, which in my opinion in all my wise years um, <laughs> as working as a developer, I hate working with code where people are expressing their feelings or <laughs> they're being very um, not objective. And so I think Go really forces you to write explicit code that's clear, it's not opinionated, it's not subjective, uh, it just is, and you know what your code is doing. Um, So yeah, so this is one of my old coworkers said this to me, great, Go seems great, but like it's so opinionated. Um, and I would agree that Go is opinionated, but in all the best ways possible. I know a lot of really good JavaScript devs. Um, and so I've been able to work with all of them and it's great, like I get to talk to one person and they write purely functional JavaScript and that's awesome, like do that, that's cool. And then I have another dev who's super excited that there's going to be classes implemented in ES6. Um, and that's awesome. Cool. You like classes. Uh, but what's hard is that I worked with both of them. So I had to write code that worked around purely functional JavaScript. And then this person who was trying to like shoehorn classes into existing JavaScript code. And it just wasn't that great. Um, yeah, so so fast, going so fast through my talk. <laughs> but yeah, so I guess what my point is, is that uh, being a good programmer isn't always about uh, writing code how you want to. It's not about doing it purely functional or being a super academic. Like what writing good code is about is writing code that's easy to maintain uh, for yourself, uh, easy for your team to maintain, and then in the end, when you've done this, you have a good project because everybody can maintain it and it's, there's no confusion on your team what a certain feature does. Um, and so it might not be perfect, but it's easy. And so I think that was the focus of the Go development team. If you read any of their documentation, they're very blunt about putting their, what they believe up, which is that writing code should be easy. Um, and so, yeah, uh, these are some good resources. If you're just starting out, I definitely recommend golangbook.com. If you're at all intimidated about learning a new language, this sort of assumes that you don't know anything about programming, so it's great. It shows you how to set up your text editor. Uh, golangbootcamp.com is also good. Um, I think those two books coupled together get you ready to just read the documentation itself. Uh, along with a lot of Googling, which is what I did. Um, <laughs> and then there's also gophers.slack.com, 
uh, which if you guys want to tweet me, I can send you the invite. And then if you like talks like this and better ones, <laughs> you can go to goforvids.appspot.com where there's tons of just very purely go talks. So I still have 10 minutes because I raced through that talk. <laughs> um, uh, no worries, actually, Julia. Thanks a lot. <laughs> you've, you've actually got us back on schedule. Oh.